Pokey Pursuing Swift students, this is Prof G. Let's start to build out the user interface for the Catch em All app. The first part of the user interface will look very familiar, but we'll learn something new about options when using the list in Swift UI that will allow us to iterate through the list without for each. Now I've created a launch screen and an app icon. You don't need to use these if you don't want to. You can find these files at bit.ly slash prof-g-swiftui-files. Just right click on the Catch em All folder and download that to your computer. Then let's open up Xcode and create a new app. We'll call this Catch em All. Again, this is the sixth app in the series, so all of this should be familiar. I'm gonna assume from earlier lessons that you know how to add the app icon and the launch screen. If not, feel free to look at the last lesson in that first chapter, which was our You Are Awesome app. Now I'm gonna play, build, and run the app. I can see the launch screen. Now I'm gonna press the home button in the simulator. I see the app icon, nice. And just so we can create our user interface, I'm gonna create a temporary variable to hold a temporary string array. So just before the body property, I'll say var creatures equals, and you can put anything in between the square brackets, but I'm gonna put in the strings Pikachu, comma Squirtle, comma Charizard, comma, and Snorlax. And now we're not going to try to work with a V stack in here. So let's highlight and delete all this code and we'll replace this with a navigation stack first. And then inside this, we'll add a list. But when I type list in the past, we just used the option with the curlies for the content. But here I'd like you to select an option that lets us iterate over an array. So select one of the options with data ID and content. The setup should look pretty familiar. It's just like our for each statement. And for data, let's enter creatures, our string array that we just created, tab over to ID, this should be backslash dot self, then tab over to content and press return. So we see the trail enclosure format with the curlies. We see that just like a for each, it wants us to name a data element. This will hold the individual values of the data that we're iterating over. So since each of the creatures value is a creature, we're just gonna call this creature. The keyword in is after this. Then I'll tab over to write the code. And this is where we can enter how to display the creature strings. And for now, we'll just enter a text view text passing in creature singular. And below this list, I'll enter the dot list style modifier to set this to dot plane. And then under text, I'll set the dot font modifier, setting this to title two. And let's add a navigation title. Remember, we need to do that inside the navigation stack. So I'm gonna do that right under the list. So under the list style modifier, I'll say dot navigation title and enter the string Pokemon with a capital P as my title. And I see this show up in the live preview. Nice. So this works great. And you might ask yourself, hey, why do I even need the for each then? Well, if you wanted to work with the dot on delete modifier that we learned about in the to-do list app, and there are others as well that don't work as well with our app example, but there's a dot on move to reorder values. There's also an edit button that we could use. Well, if you want to use those, you've got to use the for each statement. So watch this. If I try to enter dot on delete under the list, it doesn't show up at all. Code completion won't let me do this. But if I wrap the text view in a for each, and this for each is inside the list, and I'll pass in creatures and use backslash dot self as my ID and press return for content and add creature as my value name. And I'm gonna cut out the text view and paste it in between the for each curlies. And I'll change the list line to list open curly like it was in the to-do list app, fix the spelling of creature before the in. Then if I enter dot on delete as a modifier below for each, it now shows up in code completion. Now, since I'm getting a fixed list of Pokemon and these are controlled by the Pokemon Corporation, there's no reason for us to delete, reorder, or enter any Pokemon. We just wanna see all the Pokemon that are available and look through them. So this is a perfect example of view only data. So we don't need for each here since we're never gonna edit, move, or delete any of these items. So I'm gonna undo to get rid of the for each and go back to the original list statement that we typed in. So pro tip, if you're only viewing data for cells in a list, you don't need for each, but if you plan to edit those cells, then you need to put a for each inside the list. And the last thing I'd like to do is to change the name of content view to creatures list view. And to do that, I'm just gonna highlight the name content view in the struct definition, right click, select refactor rename. And when the code folds, I'll enter creatures list view, upper camel case, press return. The two spots where the content view was referred to in the project are now named creatures list view. The file name in the project navigator has also been changed. And if you wanna be super thorough, you can copy the creatures list view and paste it over the old content view in the comment up here. You didn't need to do that, but it just now your comment reads properly. Then the next lesson will show how to add a JSON reader to your browser. And you'll absolutely wanna do that before moving on to the lesson after that, where we show you how you access and parse JSON in your app. Keep hacking.